Hey, what's up guys? I'm Evan and today we are going to be looking at how to make a chat app. This has got to be the easiest, simplest, quickest way because I didn't want to put a lot of effort into this video. Now this tutorial is going to be based off of my magnum opus of tutorials, the how to build a chat app with React Native, Expo, Firebase, React Native, and Gifted Chat. I highly recommend you check it out. It's much funnier. Uh, this Netflix adaptation that you're about to watch is just not going to do it justice. So I'm just going to put my name in, click next, and then I have a list of all of these different people who have signed in and used the app. So I'll just go ahead and put a, a message into here really quickly. And now if I come over here and I send a message, it will pop open just like that. And you know what FL stands for. So before we get started, you're going to want to hop over to the Firebase console, that's console.firebase.com, and you're going to want to set up a JavaScript or a web project in a particular way. I'll show you how here in a second. If you don't want to do that, you can always just use my credentials. I actually don't mind, and all the source code for this will be down below. So all you have to do, hit add, create a new project, give your project a new name, and then accept those terms. I'm not going to create a new project because I think I'm out of projects. I'm going to hop into a project which I already have set up. In that project, you're going to want to hit whatever the plus thing is that shows up, and you're going to want to create a web project. Now that web project is going to have a config, and you're going to copy that config, and well, you can copy it later because I'm not going to get to that part until the end of the video. But the one thing that you need to do to actually make this work is you need to jump over to the authentication tab, and then you need to go to sign in methods. Once you're in sign in methods, scroll all the way to the bottom, and then here you're going to see anonymous authentication. That's right, I'm being so lazy today. And then you're going to pop that one open, hit enable, and then save. Now what you can do is you can anonymously authenticate. See, so you have all these rich, great authentication systems here. I don't really want to fuss with any of the SDKs today, so we're going to use anonymous authentication, which just means that we can instantly get into our profile and edit data, and we also get a UID and other g good stuff, but the user can't ever log back in if they log out, so... Anyways guys, that's all you're going to need to do in the Firebase console, so let's hop over to snack.expo.io and create a new snack. Now our file structure is going to be very simple. We're going to have components, which should be called screens. We're going to have our chat screen and our main screen inside of that. And then down here, underneath our app, we're going to have Fire. Fire is going to be the shared instance where we do all of our Firebase database manipulation and our authentication. Very simple. We're also going to handle all of our navigation in the top level app.js. So, bare minimum. Now you don't actually need Expo for this one at all, but I am using Snack because it is the best way for me to film the videos and write code. Use, use Snack. All right, so step one, we gotta set up the navigation. So we're gonna use React Navigation, the greatest navigation library of all time, and it is a native navigation solution. We're going to import Create Stack Navigator. This is going to give us this header bar up the top and the ability to push between the screens. And then we're just going to have two screens in here. I actually don't know why I'm formatting it like this. We can make it even more simple if we just cut those parts out. We're gonna pass in the screens, main and chat. Those are the only two screens we need. And then we're gonna export this as the default in our app.js, which makes it the root component. For step two, we need to have a screen which lets us define our username that's going to be associated with the user that we're sending messages from. To do this, all we need is a basic React Native component, and then we need a text input, we need a state, and then we need a way to send that name to the next screen. So a button. Right here, we just have a title, which is going to tell the user what they need to do. Not very important. Then we have the text input. Now the text input has a state associated with it, which means that when we call, or when we change the text, when we type anything, then this onChangeText method is going to be called. Once that's called, then we want to update the state with this.setState and the variable that was passed through as name. When we get that name property, we can extract that from our state and use it as the value in the text input. By doing that, it allows our text input to continue to update after we input the text. And after that, we have a simple button here. It's actually kind of complex. I don't know why I made it like that. But we have a simple button here with an onPress method, and then the next thing 
when we call this button, we want to push to the next screen, the chat screen. We're going to do that using React Navigation. And with React Navigation, when you define your screens, whatever the first component is, that top level screen component, that is going to be passed a navigation prop, which we can use to manipulate the navigator. We're using it over here by calling this.props.navigation.navigate. And then we're passing in the name of the screen that we want to navigate to, which we had defined right here, chat. So we also want to take the name that we just defined and send it to the next screen, the chat screen, so we can display it and use it in Firebase. To do that, we need to send data from one screen to another. We can do that simply by passing an object in after the name of the screen, and that object will just define whatever properties we want to push over. In this case, it's just the name property, which we can then access with this.state.params. Dot name? I don't know. But when we pass the name to the next screen, let's just go over to the next screen now, to the chat screen. So in the screen, we're going to define our navigation options as a function, which is different from our last screen where we define the navigation options simply as an object with the property title, which was set to a static title, chatter. Here, on the other hand, we want to actually send the name of our user as the title. The way we're going to do that is we're going to access the navigation params from the last screen in this new screen. So right here, we're going to be past the props for the screen. We're going to destructure navigation out of those props, and then we're going to return an object using this kind of shorthand thing right here. But this time for the title, what we're going to do is we're going to call navigation.state.params and then dot name. And if the name isn't defined for some reason, then we're just going to use the string chat. We're doing that with a logical or operation op operator. And this is actually old syntax as well. The new way you would do this is by calling navigation get param name and that way you don't have to do any of the optional stuff because it, there's no chance that that will be accessing an undefined object. So the first thing you may have noticed here is that we have a very complex UI on the screen but we don't have a lot in the render method. That's because we're using a library called React Native Gifted Chat made by the incredible Farid Safi I've actually been messaging and telling him much I love him on Twitter, and you should too. And also my boy Xavier does a lot of work on it as well. So thank you, Xavier. You're you're incredible. But that's that's what they do it for. They put all the hard work in so that they can get a, a creepy child to wink at them on the internet. So gifted chat can be extended in a lot of different ways. I highly recommend you check out their example, their expo example I just recently updated. So it's got a ton of different features, things like images and maps and videos, along with just folder refresh and everything you might want from a chat app. So here we're just using the bare minimum. So to get the bare minimum, what we're going to do is pass in messages, which is just going to be an array that we'll add our messages to. And then we're gonna have the on send method. So in our text input down here at the bottom, once we have written something and we hit on send, this method will be called with the message, which we just input. And then we're going to have our user property. So the reason for this is you might have a bunch of users that aren't you, and then you'll have one user that is you. That user is going to be defined by an ID value and the name, which is why we define the name in the last property thing. And then our ID value is going to be our Firebase user ID, which we'll get into here in a little bit. And then what we're going to do to actually add the messages and get the messages is we're going to use our Firebase shared instance that we're about to create. So right over here, you see we have component did mount. That's called right after the first render call is made. And we're gonna do that with fire.share.on. I'll show you what that method looks like here in a second. And then we're gonna pass in the messages. Then we're using a special version of set state. Now this version of set state waits until an async operation is complete before it allows you to persist new data. That's really handy so the data doesn't start to get out of order. We do that by just passing in a function instead of an object, and that function will give us the previous state, which we can then merge with our new state. We're going to do that by using we're going to do that by using the helper method that gifted chat provides, giftedchat.append, and then we're going to pass in the previous messages and the new message. And it'll it'll condense them together in the correct order. So here in our component will unmount, this method is going to be called right before the component is removed. So this is where we want to do any kind of cleanup, especially server-side cleanup. And we're going to call fire.share.off. All right, that is it for the actual front end part. Now let's look at the back end. And right up here at the top level, I, oh, also I, I abandoned the step thing. We're on like step seven or something, I don't know. But here at the top level, I have my Firebase shared instance. And I do this because Firebase has its own kind of state system built in, and we don't wanna be like interacting with a bunch of different instances of listeners and 
not listeners, and then having them clash in data. So I just like to keep all my Firebase stuff in one consistent area. So up here at the top, I'm importing Firebase. I'm just using version 4.8, a little bit of an older version, just because they pump out versions faster than I pump out bad code. And then in the constructor, we have an init function and then our observe auth function. So the init function is going to do two things. First, it's going to look to see if any apps already exist. Now, this is really important in Snack and any kind of system which has hot reloading because Firebase doesn't know how to clear itself out. So if you don't have this, then you'll get some error that looks like Firebase uh, default app is already initialized. And to avoid that, just do not Firebase apps.length, which just means if the length is less than or equal to zero. And then the second thing that we're going to do is actually initialize the app. Now this is going to be the JS initialization. This is going to be the initialization code that they show you in that block that you just copy and paste into your code. For this particular example, feel free to use this Firebase setup that I have right here. It's very simple. All right, and then in our constructor, the next thing that we're going to be doing after init is calling that observe auth method. And now what this does is it's just going to call firebase.auth.onAuthState change. And then it's going to have a method because I just broke this out into a million little methods. And that method is going to be passed our Firebase user. Now this user can either be a Firebase user or null. And it's null when you've been logged out or if you aren't logged in to begin with. So the reason that we're doing this right after initializing the app is because we don't want to do anything until we've determined that the user is logged in or logged out. Now, the only thing that we're actually going to be doing here is we're going to be checking to see if the user is not logged in already. And the reason for that is because we are going to be using anonymous authentication. That was so lame. Now this is great because you can create a user and that user will have a UID and information which allows them to access your database and your Firestore and your storage and do analytics stuff and you don't need to futz with setting up FBSDK or Twitter or Google or GitHub or text inputs for email and password setup. To do this anonymous authentication, what we're going to do is call firebase.auth.signin anonymously and then I'm going to write, wrap that in a try catch block which just means that if there is an error logging you in anonymously, like for instance, if you don't enable it in the Firebase console, then you will get thrown an error here and it will just alert you with a UI alert saying what the problem was. All right, so right underneath that, we're going to have two helper getters. Those getters are going to be UID and ref. Now the UID is going to be your user's UID and we're just going to wrap that so it's easy to access. And then the ref is going to be where we want to upload and download our messages from. In this case, it's just firebase.database.ref with messages, which is just slash messages in your database. If we scroll down a little bit further, we'll see the send method that we're using for that on send property in gifted chat. Now this is just going to be a function which passes through the property messages, which is just an array of messages which are structured in the way that gifted chat likes to see its messages structured in. So we're going to iterate through those messages with a for loop. And when we iterate through a message, what we want to do is filter out the text and the user properties from that message. We don't want any of the extra stuff that gifted chat sends through. So we're just going to pull out those two items and then we're going to pass them to Firebase by creating a new object called message and we're passing it text and user and then timestamp. That's the timestamp that you created it at. But we're going to be using the actual Firebase server timestamp by calling firebase.database.serververValue.timestamp. I mean, it's all caps, so it's really just like timestamp. And then for simplicity's sake, I just changed the code around a little bit. We're just going to be calling firebase.database.refmessages.push message, which just means that we're taking this message and we're appending it onto the giant list of all of the messages. All right, so remember in our component did mount, we had the on method that we called. That is going to be calling this.ref.limit to the last 20 and then on child added. So what this does is it takes that ref that we're looking at and then it's going to say for every child that's added, uh, call a method. And in this instance, we're going to be calling parse. Now, not only will child added observe every time a new child is added, but the first time you call it, it will get every single child that already exists there and send it back to you. Now, of course, we're also limiting this to the, the most current 20 messages because we don't want to download everything all at one time. And then finally, in the parse method, we're going to pass that snapshot and we're going to extract the data out of it. So remember, we packed it into there in a nice format that was good for Firebase. Now we're going to pull it out and then reformat it for gifted chat. Now, the way we're going to do this is by calling snapshot.val, which will return the JSON value of that snapshot. 
and then we're going to pull out timestamp and we're going to alias the name to number stamp and I'll show you here why in a second I'll show you why here and then we're going to call text and user and then we're also going to pull the key out and we're going to use that key as the message ID. Now the key is something that's created when we call dot append. It's a unique key for that message. So we're just going to kind of not duplicate work and we're going to use Firebase's unique identifier as our gifted chat unique identifier. Kind of clever, right? So the reason we aliased timestamp is because we actually want to pass it in as a date object. Uh, the, when we store it in the server, we're converting it to a number and so when we pull it back down, we just want to convert that number back into a date so that gifted chat knows how to parse it nicely. So we're going to do that very easily by passing the number into the constructor new date, and then it will know how to convert that into a number magically using Unix time. Now here we are just reformatting that message so that we can use it in gifted chat in the format that it expects, which has the underscore ID timestamp text and user if you're adding things like images or location you would have extra properties as well but i'm not getting into that today because we're actually running kind of long here finally the last thing in here is the auth method right so we just we have an open connection which is listening to whenever a child is added but if we were to hot reload and not remove that connection then it's going to create this big list of things that are connecting and you're going to have all these issues these transient terrors where things are so when we call this dot ref dot off, that method is going to just cancel that subscription and that's going to be called before we do any kind of hot reloading so that we don't run into any of those issues. All right, I realized I forgot to film the outro. Like this new haircut? I do. It's why I'm uh, wearing the hat. So on one side I've got me and on the other side I've got also me. Uh, I'm going to just now send a message from one to the other using the code that we just put together in the snack and I'll do like... Hey bro, wanna hang out later? Um, nah, I'm busy forgetting to film my outro. Anyways, Anyways guys, thanks, thanks so much for watching. If I you enjoyed, enjoyed, be sure, to let, did, be sure to let me know down below, down below and, and I will see you in the next in video. The next video.